I hope I don't break out into a spontaneous coughing fit during this video. Hello everybody, I hope you've all had the most amazing Christmas and festive time, or just December in general if you don't celebrate it. I'm filming this a few days in advance, so right now I can probably imagine myself sitting in Christmas pyjamas, having not showered for a few days, eating chocolate. That is my goal for right now, that is where I want to be, and probably where I will find myself come Sunday morning. So today is all about December favourites, and this is the last favourites of the year. It's come around so quickly I actually feel as if I only just filmed this video last year it's pretty much the same setup I've got the Christmas tree behind me why not it's probably the only favorites video I'll ever be able to get away with having a Christmas tree behind me so I'm just going to talk to you today about my favorite products in December this is quite a contrast to last month because I feel like last month's favorites was quite short I hadn't really been using a lot of stuff whereas this month I've been really into makeup really into products so there's quite a few things to show you here so I'm going to start off with some skincare because I very rarely have skincare in my favourites. I'm the kind of person that likes to try things out and doesn't use new skincare all that often but there are a few things that I have found this month that I'm really really into. The first of which I kind of wrote off a little bit. This is Bioderma's Hydro Bio H2O. This is their micellar water and it's actually the hydrating version so it's a bit different to the original Sensor Bio which everybody knows and loves. I'm not personally a massive fan of Bioderma. I think it's really great for removing makeup but I find it just dries out my skin so much that I don't use it that often. Basically the exact same thing, but with a more moisturising formula, and it really does give my skin a nice boost of moisture as well as taking off my makeup. I've been using this a lot this month, mainly because I've been lazy and haven't been reaching for oil cleansers and balm cleansers as much. So I've been using this to take my makeup off and then just cleansing with a face wash. And then also a moisturiser that I've been using a lot this month. Now, I'm a massive fan of Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, but I've run out of it, it's all gone, I'm gonna have to wait to buy myself a new one before I start using that again. And a few people said as well that it has SPF in it, which I didn't actually know about, so I've been skipping that one in the evenings and just using it in the mornings, and then obviously I ran out of it completely. So the moisturiser I've been using in place of that one is the Vanishing Cream from Lush. This is actually quite a different one because it's designed as more of a balancing moisturiser, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury one is very rich and very kind of hydrating. This one is just as moisturising, but it sinks in, that's why it's called Vanishing Cream, it just vanishes away but for some reason I find this hydrates my skin just as well and in fact I really really like using it I find you can kind of measure the amount of moisture you want by the amount of product that you put on I love using this under makeup as well it makes for a really amazing base it just helps everything to go on a bit smoother but it doesn't interfere with any of the products that I'm wearing so I've been really into this one there's also a new exfoliating product that I've been using quite a lot this month I mentioned this in my cult beauty haul and I was never really a massive fan of manual exfoliants but this one's kind of turned it around for me because it's just such an amazing formula. It's basically a balm with micro exfoliating beads in it. So it feels like you're using a balm cleanser. It's really nice to work into your skin, but it's also exfoliating it at the same time. And it's very gentle in that way because it has that nice rich oil around it, but it still manages to really exfoliate my skin quite well. It's the Oskia Micro Exfoliating Balm. I'm starting to think that Oskia can do no wrong when it comes to skincare because everything I've tried from them, I've just instantly loved. And I've been using it about once a week actually, which is definitely a lot more than I would ever normally use an exfoliator, but I feel like it's just gentle enough to do so. And I think my skin has definitely been thanking me for using this one because it's not looking all that dull at the moment and it does tend to get a bit gray and a bit pasty towards the end of the year, but so far, so good. So makeup wise, I've been really into quite a few palettes this month. In fact, I have three here that I have to talk about because I've been using them so much. So the first one is my one true love. I am so happy that I have this. I told myself I wasn't gonna buy it and then I ended up getting it anyway. And it's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit. You've probably seen me use this in a few videos already and mention it pretty much every single week. But what it is is basically a super handy, really travel friendly set of three of the powders, two of the blushes and the bronzer in there as well. And you already know that I'm such a massive fan of these powder products. I love the powders on their own. I love the blushes and the bronzer, it's just amazing as well. So having them all in a set pretty much just sums up my entire face routine. And this is all I've been using for all three of those products. It's pretty much all I've needed and I've actually really cut down space in my makeup bag because I haven't been using extra products and taking more than one thing with me. I just forgot how amazing they are. They just make your skin look so radiant and glowy. They're just unparalleled to anything else. They don't look shiny ever. I think at least for the next few months this is all I'm going to be reaching for. So the second palette is a little bit of a delicate one. I don't really want to hold this up too much because 
Sadly, it is broken and it actually broke within the first hour of me getting it. I think I'm just cursed when it comes to Becca Jacqueline Hill collaborations because as you all know, earlier in the month, I broke my champagne pop, which I'm so sad about. Hopefully by now I should have fixed it. I'm looking into fixing it, so fingers crossed. But this one is the Holiday Glow palette, which is very, very limited edition. You can't actually buy this anymore. And Susie very kindly picked this up from Sephora for me. It's just one of the most beautiful highlighting palettes I've ever seen, and I'm so sad that this is already broken. Um, I can still use it though, and I have been using it pretty much daily, but I just have to keep it nice and flat. So it has Champagne Pop in the center, which is actually the least broken of all of them, and then Pearl, and then Blushed Copper as well. I'm surprised how much I actually like this one. I didn't think I'd get a lot of use out of it, but it's amazing as an overlay for your blusher, and even as an eyeshadow, I've been using it a lot on my eyes too. And then obviously Champagne Pop is just the most beautiful highlighting color. And Pearl, actually, I really, really like. It's a very white and very bright highlight, but it looks amazing on the cheekbones. So this I'm gonna put away very, very carefully and hopefully continue using it for as long as possible because it's such a beautiful palette. And then my last palette in this favourites is an eyeshadow palette. Again, I mentioned this in a haul recently and it's the Stila in the Light palette. I feel as if I've been after this palette for so many years and I just never, for some reason, bit the bullet, even though it's not a particularly pricey eye palette. And I don't know why I've waited so long because I'm literally so in love with it. It has so many perfect shades in it, so many really wearable colours, some amazing evening looks as well you can do with this, just pretty much any Thing. Again, I think it's a really great one for traveling. This is what I've been taking with me when I've been traveling this month because you can just do whatever you want with it basically. I am particularly head over heels for this shade here, which is Kitten, which you can probably see on my eyes at the moment. I just love it. It's such a beautiful, really brightening, really shimmery, champagne-y pink color. I absolutely love it. And then also this shade here, which is Gilded Gold, I've been using a lot. The formulas are great too. I think they even rival the butteriness and the workability of Urban Decay eyeshadows. I just think it's a really Really amazing palette. Speaking of Urban Decay eyeshadows, however, there are two that I have here that have definitely been my glitter picks of the month. Obviously, you're going to need a glittery eyeshadow in December. It just has to happen, and these are two of the Urban Decay Moonstone eyeshadows. They're amazing glittery eyeshadows. They don't have much pigment to them, but when you swatch them on your finger and put them on your eye, they are basically just pure glitter and really intense glitter at that. So I have Interstellar and I also have Cosmic. Interstellar is kind of more of a gold shade, and then Cosmic is a little bit more of a white, kind of pinky champagne color. It really doesn't come across on camera how glittery these are, and together, they just make for a really beautiful, very Christmassy, festive, sparkly eye. I also think these would be amazing for a New Year's Eve look, and I might be using one or two of them for that as well. I think they're just great eyeshadows, and if you're after glitter, these are definitely the ones to go for. I've also got an eyeliner favorite from the month. This is the Stila Got Inked Cushion Eye eyeliner. I really like this and it's actually been making me wear liquid liner a lot more than I usually do. I'm not sure if it's the formula of this or just the fact that it's so black and intense and really really rich but whenever I use this I can just manage to do perfect winged liner instantly which is very very rare for me. It basically is exactly what the name suggests. It's just a little cushion or a sponge in there that's soaked with the formula of the eyeliner and you press your brush into it and then it just comes out and it's actually a very clean and very easy way to use liquid liner. Usually I end up with it all in the lid and all over the sides but so far this looks as if I haven't touched it and I've been using it loads so I'm really impressed with this. I think Cedar are doing quite a few cushion products at the moment. So my last makeup favourite is actually one that's become a bit of a holy grail for me for glowy skin and it's from Burberry. It's their Fresh Glow Luminous Base. First of all, how gorgeous is this packaging? It has this beautiful gold lid, and then inside there's actually quite a lot of product there, but it's basically a base product, kind of like a primer. When you look at it in the bottle, it does look slightly shimmery, almost like a highlighter would do in the pan, but once it's on the skin, for some reason that shimmer just disappears, and it gives you just a very dewy, very fresh finish, and I think this works so nicely underneath foundations. If you have a foundation that makes your skin look just slightly on the matte side and not quite as fresh and as glowy, as you would like. I think this is amazing to use underneath. I've been using this alongside the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation, which is one of my faves anyway, but it has quite a heavy set finish. And when I have this underneath, it just makes it slightly lighter and slightly more luminous, which I really, really like. So this has been used a lot on my face recently. It's also really nice just to wear on its own. So if you're having a no makeup day and your skin's just looking a little bit lackluster, I've been putting a pump of this on and it just makes all the difference. So I really like this one. Of course, I have to talk about the lipstick that I'm wearing right now as well, because I've honestly not taken this off my lips all month. If I've been wearing a red, it's been this, and it's the Hourglass Opaque Rouge in Radiant.
Raven. I bought this quite a while ago and I didn't really use it but I picked it up again at the beginning of the month and I just haven't stopped wearing it because actually it's such an amazing formula. It just lasts for so long and it's actually very comfortable but the formula and the payoff of the colour of this is just unparalleled. It's also such a beautiful red, it's just a very pure red. I don't think I've ever come across a red like this that isn't orangey toned in some way or bluey toned. It's just right smack bang in the middle of very, very red. And I love it. It's just been my favourite lipstick this month. Haven't stopped wearing it. I have it on now and I probably will continue to wear this for the next few weeks as well. So if you hadn't noticed, I've been putting out quite a few videos this month and I honestly think in every single one I am wearing the same red nail polish, the same as I'm wearing now today. This nail polish from Tom Ford is all that I've been wearing this month. I've been taking it off, putting it straight back on again because I just love it. It's the perfect shade of Christmassy festive red. It's called Scarlet Chinois and it's honestly become one of my absolute favourite reds of all time. And the thing that I love about it as well is that you only actually need one coat of this. Just one coat, that is all I'm wearing at the moment, one coat of nail polish. I haven't even got base coat or top coat on it because I painted these in a bit of a rush. I've been trying out a lot of Tom Ford products this year and I have to say I'm so impressed by everything that I've used. I think they're just such beautiful quality, amazing formulas and the shades as well. You just can't beat them. I'm really, really loving Tom Ford at the moment. It is Christmas though and it wouldn't be Christmas without a glittery nail polish. So my glitter pick of the month is this one here from Nails Inc. This is such a cool nail varnish. If you were just looking at it, you think it was clear, but you actually have to shake it like a snow globe, which is actually what it's called. And it's suddenly beautifully glittery. It's quite sparse and very delicate. So if you like something very chunky that covers your whole nail, this probably isn't the one for you, but if you like a more subtle take on glitter, this is amazing. I quickly wanted to mention a few candle favorites as well this month because tis the season to burn candles. And I have a kind of high-end one here and then a more reasonably priced one. But these two I have been burning constantly. They're my favorite Christmas candles of the moment. And the first one is from Diptyque. It's their Sapin candle or Sapin. And it just smells like Christmas trees. I think it actually means Christmas tree in French. It's very fresh and very kind of piney. It's not the kind of scent I usually go for, but I really have been enjoying it this month. It's a very different take on Christmas candles in that it's not very cinnamony and very spicy. It has a little bit of that in it and it has a bit of kind of wood burning fire scent to it, but it's kind of more overwhelmingly Christmas tree like. So it kind of smells like you have a Christmas tree in the room when you're burning this. I also really like the packaging. This is one of their limited Christmas range and I kind of buy a small one of these each year and I have a little collection of them now. So I will continue doing that. And then the second one is from Yankee. I haven't bought a Yankee candle for so many years. Um, probably not that long, but it's been a while and I was sniffing this recently and I just really fell in love with the scent of it. It's the Fireside Treats one, which is basically marshmallow with a touch of fireplace in it. It's a very cosy scent. It's really sweet, but also a bit warming as well. It's just the perfect kind of festive candle for me. I don't really like ones that are overly spicy, so this is great. If you do though, definitely go and check out the White Company's Winter Candle because that is just super cinnamony, super Christmas. And that is it for my final favorites of the year. I've struggled through, I've coughed about a hundred times and I've lost my voice nearly, but we made it through. So that is the year done and done. I will leave a playlist down below of all the year's favourites if you want to go and watch those and I will also be having a best of 2015 series coming up in a few weeks time or maybe even next week depending on when I film it. So thank you all for watching again. I hope you're having an amazing time doing nothing, having a very Christmassy day. So that is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon. Bye!